is a day A bad luck's always a coming my way It's been a frustrating five days since six-year-old Adam Walsh was last seen. His disappearance has prompted community-wide concern in South Broward. Late this afternoon, volunteers met with Adam's parents to continue their search. Close to tears, John Walsh stood on a car asking people not to give up hope. We searched and searched for Adam, and we haven't found a body. So everybody thinks he's alive. We do, too. And uh, we feel that since you people have searched so hard the best thing we can do now is get these flyers in everybody's hands because the police are fr so frustrated nobody's really come forth and the clues that we have really we haven't been haven't come up with anything substantial For this portion of the video, Jessica is going to be sitting this one out, mainly to watch the car because we aren't parked on the side of the turnpike. I don't recommend doing this, folks. Today we find ourselves on the side of the road of Florida's turnpike going north. Mile marker 174. August 10th, 1981, Adam Walsh's severed head was found in a drainage ditch alongside the Florida's turnpike just outside of Vero Beach. We're heading to that drainage ditch right now. It's loud. But I'm being safe. Now at the time of Adam's death in 1981, this mile marker 174 was a completely different number. But over time, over years, things change. The road expands. Now it's mile marker 174. And straight ahead, just beyond the speed limit 70 sign to the right, is where Adam's head was found. It's crazy to think that such history, dark history, happened right here. And we're going to talk about it a little bit more. But this is the scene right here. Looking at old photos from 1981 of this area and a police diagram of the actual crime scene just sitting here it's easy to see well to piece together the crime scene that pipe that you see sticking out that was there just beyond the pipe it's a little hard to see but I will point it out very soon there's a broken down bridge I can see some wood from where I'm sitting but that fence that you see in about the center of your screen right about the center of your screen is where Adam's head was found, August 10th, 1981. On August 7th, 1981, a Publix delivery driver noticed a blue van parked right in about the center of your screen. And down here in the drainage canal, just behind that pipe that we were just pointing out, the bridge, they noticed that there was a man standing down there with a white bucket dumping something into the water. Are you ready for this craziness? That man turned out to be, through investigation, Jeffrey Dahmer, the cannibal from Milwaukee. He was actually living here in Florida at the time Adam Walsh went missing. They thought Jeffrey Dahmer killed Adam Walsh. 
And even though Jeffrey Dahmer was actually placed at the scene of the crime three days before, he didn't do it. I could be wrong, but I do believe that there is an interview where Jeffrey Dahmer is stated as saying, listen, man, I told you everything that I've done, the names of the people and how many, I would confess to killing that boy if I did it. I didn't do it. I honestly don't know why there's not a memorial here for Adam Walsh. I feel like there really should be. I mean, I get it. A lot of places want to forget about things that happened. And to be honest, to get to this actual location where Adam's head was found, it's actually pretty dangerous and I don't recommend it. So I can see why they don't want to have a memorial stating that this is where this piece of history happened. It sucks. It does. There was a killer by the name of Otis Toll, or Otis Toll, depending on who you talk to, who was in cahoots with another serial killer by the name of Henry Lee Lucas. At the time of Adam Walsh's death, Otis Toll was living in Jacksonville. He was spending some time down in Hollywood, Florida, and it is believed that outside of the Hollywood Mall, in front of a Sears, Otis Toll abducted well, Lord, Adam Walsh into his car with the promise of toys and candy. Hopped on the turnpike, Adam Walsh started freaking out. And to try to quiet him, Otis Toll punched Adam Walsh in the face. Still wasn't crying, well, still wasn't behaving. He was crying even more so. So he strangled him with a seatbelt. And then from that point, the events of Adam's death get pretty grisly. This is Otis Toole, whom the law has judged sane of mind. He is currently serving a prison term of over 300 years at Stark Penitentiary in Florida. He granted us an interview. Uh, you're responsible for close to 700 murders. What do you have to say about that? I ain't even done one, I'm gonna do seven hundred. <laughs> Otis, you're not in here for a parking ticket. How many crimes have you confessed to, Otis? No, I don't know, I, I ain't counting. More than 125? I don't know. I see you smiling. Uh... Otis Toll confessed to the death of Adam Walsh, but eventually denied it. So nobody really knows. The Hollywood Police Department and Adam's father, the guy who created America's Most Wanted, closed the case and Otis Toll is listed as the man who killed Adam Walsh. <laughs> For uh, 27 years we've been asking who could take a six-year-old boy and murder him and decapitate him? Who? We needed to know. We needed to know. And uh, today we know. The not knowing has been a torture, but uh, that journey's over. And... Uh, a lot of horrible memories in this police department looking for that little boy. And now I think it's, uh, it's only fitting that it ends here in this police department. It's very murky. His body was never found, just his head. And it's very sad. And it all happened right here. We decided to stop and visit this location on the way down to Hollywood, Florida, which is where Adam and his family actually lived. Also, where the Hollywood Mall, the Sears department store was, 
that Adam was abducted from. The mall is no longer there. But let's go visit it anyways. It's crazy. I'm on a very, well, relatively quiet street in Hollywood, Florida. I can hear the interstate off in the distance. Behind me is an elementary school. But that green house right there, that's the house where John, his wife, and Adam Walsh lived when Adam disappeared in 1981. Now, it's no secret. You can find it on the internet, but 2801 McKinley Street here in Hollywood, Florida, this small three-bedroom house is where the Walshes lived, where everything started. Lives were changed. It's crazy to think that so much can change in one morning. It really is just a quick stop that we're making here, but I felt that it was necessary. This, this house, this street, Hollywood, Florida, is where it all began. Even before they knew it was gonna begin, America's Most Wanted happened, well started, because of all of this. And would you look at that? It's Florida. It decided it was gonna start raining. And that's okay, because you know what? I kinda like the lighting when it rains here. Right now I'm standing in the Target parking lot here at Hollywood, Florida, not too far from where the family house is. Back in 1981 when Adam Walsh and his dad and his mom were living here in Hollywood, Florida, this was the Hollywood Mall. That's where the Sears was, where Adam was abducted from. The old Hollywood Mall has been torn down and from what we could tell from reading online, the reason being that they tore it down was a teenage girl fell down an elevator shaft. So this place has not been too kind to children. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is starting to rain a little heavier. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this segment in the car. Now keep in mind, everything that we're gonna talk about took place back when times were a little bit different. Back before America's Most Wanted. Adam's abduction happened in broad daylight in the middle of the day. The police station is right across the street. I'm sorry, the police headquarters is right across the street. There were people throughout the entire mall and there were security guards present. Adam and his mom came to Sears that day because she wanted to look into buying a lamp that was on sale. When she did that, she left Adam with a bunch of kids a couple aisles over in the entertainment, the video game section. There was a new game that was coming out, so Adam and a bunch of boys hung out there when she went shopping for a lamp. After a little bit of time, she came back. Adam and the boys were gone. She asked the security guard, hey, where's the kids that were here? And he said, and I'm not gonna quote this, I don't know what the exact quote was in the police report, that there was a little bit of a, a disagreement over who was going to play next. So he had the kids find their parents and he had them leave the mall. Adam was one of them. And that was the last time anybody has ever seen Adam Walsh alive. Absolutely horrific history, I know. But something did come out of it that was good. The TV show, America's Most Wanted, which was started by his dad, as well as the, the foundation that you were looking up earlier. Also, something called Code Adam, which is an alert that when a child goes missing in a department store like Sears or Target or Walmart, I see it mostly in Walmart, a Code Adam is called saying that a child has gone missing. So that's because of Adam. Never stays a day. A battle's always a coming my way. 